Hey guys, Logan here, and we are straight back into building the race bike engine from scratch. Now, in the last video, we left off, we just sort of dummied things up for the first time, seeing how things fit and things we need to alter in the design. Uh, since then, I have put the gearbox in, as you can see. Yeah, we do have some clearance between the nuts and the gearbox, uh, it's about 3mm, which I think is safe enough, it is pretty close, um, but that's not too bad. And then in the other half, I dummied up uh, the balance shaft and there's heaps of room there, so I'm not worried about that. So the first thing I want to do though, is I want to get sort of the oiling system done in the top end. So to do that, I need to finish uh, the cam caps, so I'm quickly going to whip one of these up. Slight miscommunication between the designer and the machinist. And just like that, I have my exhaust cam cap done and dusted. I did have to uh, weld up a wee mistake and I thought might as well weld up the other galleries uh, to stop the oil leaks. So now that is done. Just gonna work on the oil transfer between the two. I was gonna use this pipe here decided it's a bit small I'm gonna go with this bigger stainless pipe and it, I think it's actually got enough meat I can machine some steps in it to help centralize it in the middle and yeah so now I'm gonna make this fit in there There we are, that is our oil gallery link finished machining and I am pretty happy with it. I can't permanently fit it at the moment because I know for a fact the 6mm drill is going to oversize those two holes I want to be a nice tight fit. I've ordered a reamer and when that turns up I'll be able to finish them. So I'm going to move on to the feed to the cam caps. So the oil is going to come in here and there's going to be a banjo bolt here so I need to do some machining, drilling and there needs to be two oil galleries which intersect each other and then it'll feed up to the cam cap. So let's move on to that now. And there we are, it is bolted in super solid, very happy with that. And cheers to the guy who let me know that my advice, I can remove the swivel base, so I gained a bit of vertical height and some rigidity. So now, about to dial in, and then we can start drilling the first hole. All right, I'm not gonna lie, I am very nervous about this. Uh, there is a lot of things that can go wrong, but just baby steps. Long story really short, the guy who owns the dividing head uh, wants it back, so I've got, yeah, half a day to uh, try whip out a gear on this crank. So, first things first, I need to work out the orientation. So if we look at an original crank, you see there's a gap lined up perfectly with the bottom of the crank. So all we've got to do is get the bottom of the crank completely flat and then we can cut the first tooth or cut the first valley. Now, a traditional gear cutter like this, which is for involute profiles, is not gonna fit whatsoever. So if it's at the appropriate depth and everything, it's gonna be cutting into the web and that's just not gonna be uh, good for anything. So I'm gonna have to make a custom cutter. So I have some high-speed steel blank here and I'm gonna try grind in the profile of the tooth into the end of it and then use it in a collet chuck try machine that profile into the crank, which I think in theory should work. Have it nice and flat, now I've got to center it. Wow, grinding this tool did not go to plan. There's quite a wee divot in my wheel and I was thinking, man, this stuff is pretty hard and it feels really heavy. And yeah, it turns out I ordered uh, tungsten steel <laughs> and I have nothing in the workshop that will even scratch it. So that is no good, so I have a 9mm uh, machine end mill that did not make a 9mm hole so it's getting sacrificed for the cause. The 
crank is back out of the mill because yeah no surprise that did not work uh, whatsoever so if anyone knows how to make a, a proper tool for cutting a gear in this situation or knows someone who can cut one for me that'd be very much appreciated so it is back on the cylinder head so now to do the oil gallery in this part here I need to actually mount this to the sign plate which means I got to modify the sign plate. Ah, uh, no. Perfect. All right, hopefully she's gonna fit first time. Oh. Yeah, that's what we want. And bolt it on and we're good to go. So this is a setup and as you've seen, we have some porosity. Well, not some, a shitload. And I'm a bit devastated to be honest. The like compared to the intake and um, you know the head gasket surface that is really bad so I have the sinking feeling I may be doing some casting in the next video but I am going to quickly finish this machining and then uh, we'll think on that. This guy has totally forgotten he's got a welder. All right, there we are. Apart from the porosity, that went smoothly, and it is actually airtight, so I'll just have to seal it up properly. But yeah, the gallery uh, went exactly where it's supposed to go. As you can see, it goes down there. It's nice and airtight, so that's good. And now I'm just gonna finish off the cam caps with the new reamer to get our wee joiner to fit. And then we are, fourth time's the charm. I've had to shorten this uh, wee pipe a couple times, but the last one was really close. So hopefully, luck of love. So I'm pretty darn happy with that. It is a nice tight fit. I can't actually rotate it in place. So that is the oil feed side for the head part of it done. So apart from that crappy surface finish with the porosity there, I can't do too much about that, unfortunately. Um, I should be able to seal it up um, and that should seal fine. Uh, but yes, yeah, so the oil flows in there through a banjo bolt, comes up to the cam cap, feeds the two cam journals on the intake side, flows across, feeds the two exhaust cam journals as well. So very happy with that. Going to put that aside and now I want to do some machining on the crank. So I want to have a go at making the taper for the rotor. So that's this taper here to fit one of these rotors on the crank. And yeah, in theory it shouldn't be too hard. Just got to dial it in with the cross slide and a dial indicator, so over to the lathe. Right, so the first crank I've got for a reference for the taper. So they do have a center on the other side. This crank is obviously uh, really munted, so uh, I don't even know if it's straight, but we will soon find out. So if I just tighten that up, uh, everything's tight, should be fine, turn it on, oh yeah, that doesn't look bent, I should be able to use that as a reference, now you just put the dial indicator on the cross slide, right this was actually a lot more finicky than I thought it was going to be but I did get it within a hundredth of a mil, um, it's not perfect it's still got maybe half of a hundredth but it's gonna be have to be good enough because I cannot be bothered doing this for another 20 minutes <laughs> Thank you.
There we are, I've just roughed that down to about a mil oversize uh, for the thread, and now I'm gonna start grinding in that taper. Or grinding? No, I hope, <laughs> I'm hoping I'm not grinding with this insert, should be cutting. And yep, the entire time lapse of making the taper looks like this. <laughs> And there we are, that is the taper. Now there's normally a bit of relief uh, cut in here. The taper's only actually engaging from about here to here. But I'll just uh, leave it how it is for a sec and see uh, how the rotor fits on it and otherwise I'll remove a bit of material here. Oh yeah, took most, it took all of it off. See, I scrubbed it all the way from there to there, and yeah, it removed most of it. Just needs, uh, there's a couple marks on the side of the ear which need cleaning up, but, oh, and I scratched it, because it's just mild steel, not hardened or anything. Bugger me, I'm pretty happy with that. Cool. Now this is probably the best place to show you the sort of uh, design change that I've made. So original crank has a whole bunch of room here for the starter motor, well the starter clutch, which you engage the starter motor. Uh, I'm not going to be running one of them, so I've shortened up the crank, yes, yeah, significantly. And while I'm over by the lathe, I thought I'd make myself a banjo bolt, and I'm yeah going to turn this 10mm banjo bolt into an 11mm one. Nope, that's not how it works. <laughs> I'm going to turn it into an 8mm one. Right, I have my single point threading tool in there, and apparently I want, there we go, 3C for a pitch of 1.25. So um, I think I know how this works. I think i got to stop it and start it every time on the same number on here. Now I think I use this lever. I've been briefly shown how to do this by a friend, but uh, yeah, here goes nothing. This went so well in fact that I'm actually gonna put it on the wall as a reminder of how not to make thread. Righty ho, so there's a couple things that I definitely need some help with. First of them is crankshaft sprocket. Now, yeah, if someone knows someone or knows how to make one or can give me a hand in any way possible, I'd be highly appreciative of that. And the second thing that I need help with is also crankshaft related. So this is the dummy crank, it is mild steel. This is sort of to mock everything up, make sure everything's gonna fit. Now the actual crank is gonna be made out of 4140. Uh, and I have some here, enough to make two crankshafts. Um, I really, really, really don't want to have to machine this from scratch uh, out of this. I would much rather someone do the roughing with a water jet. That would make my life way easier. So if someone knows someone with a water jet, hit me up. That'd be very much appreciated. <sighs> Apart from those two things, everything seems to be coming along relatively smoothly. Pretty happy with the progress on the cylinder head with the cam caps and all the oil system done. I do need to line bore the cam caps and the head at some point, but considering I haven't made or designed the camshafts yet, it'll be a bit uh, ambitious for me to do that before then. They'll be probably made out of some 4340, which I have here, which I've had for a while. So just whip them out of them and they should be good as long as they're pretty hard and they get plenty of oil. And yeah, as far as casting, I did mention that before I wanted to do some more. And that's because every time I look at a part and it has porosity in it, makes me sad <laughs> and I don't like that so I want to yeah I want to master the casting of these engine parts so I'll be doing some vacuum casting in the near future and yeah updating the design of this is a few things I didn't get quite right and need to adjust and yeah that'll be a bit of fun but yeah until then this has been Logan from the Motorcycle Forge I hope you enjoyed I'll catch you next time